Well, a preacher, uh, a white male preacher, I think he's white, uh, John Pavel Pavlovitz, recently um, uh, put out a video telling white women, or not white, but just pro-life women, how he loves them more than they love themselves. And that's just wonderful for, for a pastor to, <laughs> to, um, to say, um, because and the reason that he loves them it, is very obvious, because he wants them to be able to murder their children. And, uh, and these pro-life women don't want women to murder their children. And uh, if that sounds convoluted, it is. We'll, we'll play the video in just a moment. I'm Pastor Josh Barnes. This is the show where we're unashamed to look at political, social, cultural, and theological issues from a biblical worldview. We do that because Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, and he said the Bible's true. That means we can't be right about issues if we disagree with the Bible. And I had to rush through that so quickly because I didn't want to wait too long to get to Jonathan Barnes right here. Actually, right there we go. Uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, it's all it's, right, it's yeah. reversed on my screen, um, and uh, and so, Jonathan, thanks for thanks for joining us today. Justin's being a bum this week. Um, still still chilling after all the time we took off around uh, around <laughs> Christmas. But we're gonna jump back into our woke preacher clips. We we try to do at least one a month or or one or two of these a month. Um, and uh, you can go onto YouTube or onto Facebook and find woke preacher clips, and uh, they do a great job sort of exposing the type of things that are being said by pastors in churches. And uh, this comes straight uh, to us from woke preacher clips on Facebook. Um, well, let's let's jump it, Jonathan. Did you know John Pavel Pavlovitz before this? No. In fact, when I was like looking at this clip, I had to ask you afterwards like this guy's a preacher <laughs> um he just kind of sits down and mansplains a bunch of stuff to women um which i don't think is something he's supposed to do uh yeah. particularly but uh no he doesn't sound like it he just sounds like a raging liberal as you know you know i i'm trying to remember where i've heard of him before maybe we've res maybe we might have responded to one of his um videos before i i sure hope it's not, he's not somebody that i've interviewed before <laughs> i hope that's not the case because i've interviewed a lot of pastors and then find out later well <laughs> typically i find out later that they're they're really solid uh, every now and then i'm like i can't believe i interviewed that person um but i i don't think so um john pavlovitz let's uh let's hear what he had to say recently about um how much he loves pro-life women i'm a pro-choice man and there's a strange moment in nearly all of my interactions with professed pro-life women, one that never fails to disorient and grieve me. Whether on social media or in person, I eventually have a realization. Only one of us believes that she should have full autonomy over her own body, and it isn't her. Whether our exchanges in that moment are chilly or combustible, and regardless of how incendiary their words toward me might be, it never fails to fill me with a sadness. They are fighting with me and I am fighting for them. That never feels right. But the irony of my interactions with women who advocate for the removal or limiting of the rights of women is that I am trying to advocate for their inherent self-worth while they seem less passionate about it. I believe in education and in birth control and in doing everything possible not to create an unwanted pregnancy. But at the end of all of that, I defer to the woman because I simply don't believe that what happens within the confines of her body is any of my business and I can't comprehend why any woman would contest such a belief. How in my validation of her autonomy, I am viewed by her as her enemy. I am fully unwaveringly for her. The sanctity of her sentient life is a non-negotiable for me. And there's a sad irony at play when I realize that a pro-life woman arguing with a pro-choice man like myself is essentially relinquishing control over her destiny to other men, and I'm saying she deserves better. I wish we were allies in this and not adversaries because my respect for her is complete. 
I respect her more than her pastors, more than her politicians, more than the men who may have raised her or attended her church or lived alongside her. And it would give me great joy if more professed pro-life women simply agreed with me. God, I've got so much to say about every single line of that. <laughs> Let me just start. Can I just start? Can I start? By saying, oh, thanks, thanks for the mansplaining there, white male, trying to tell women uh, how to, what to do with their own bodies. Uh, do, you, do you notice how he's like kind of apologizing for having an opinion about about women and at the same time trying to tell women that they're wrong? And and it's like it's, it's this irony that just doesn't work like this, this, this clash of worldviews within him that that he that he would in deference to women, <laughs> argue with women. <laughs> and he can't even understand it. Like he, the whole video is about how he can't understand this. <laughs> this. Well, how about this? How about this, John? How about maybe, uh, maybe truth is truth and it doesn't really matter if the person speaking the truth is male or female. If it's true, it's true. Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe. Not all women are exactly the same, and maybe not all men are exactly the same. And maybe just because you're a man doesn't mean you can't talk to a woman about something that concerns her. You know, maybe maybe we could just notice recon and recognize actual true things. And maybe that would be just a wonderful society to live in, but we haven't lived in one for, you know, several years. Yeah, maybe, maybe the woman you're talking with, the, the one you're arguing with, maybe she's not as selfish as you might think all women are. Uh, maybe she does care about something other than herself. I mean, it's not, ultimately, it's not about bodily autonomy in the first place. But maybe she's willing to say something about, hey, it's okay if I give up this thing called what you say is my right if, if I'm saving the life of a child. Um, not everybody has to have that super selfish world there, view, John. They, yeah, they don't can, have to. Can we? Can we? All right. So we are men. And so we're going to look at this from from maybe a different perspective than pro-life women would. Um, but when I see a man arguing that women should be able to murder children, what I see is a man who wants to have um, sexual relationships with women without any kind of responsibility attached to something that could result from that. That's what I see. As a man, I look at the man and I say, what a pig. You just want to have sexual relationships with women without having any kind of responsibility for, for the life that that can and does create. That's what that action has always created for all of time, right? I mean, that, that's what it does, right? It doesn't every time. You, don't understand, you understand what I'm saying. So here's a man who's arguing that women should murder children. Um... And, and it's because it's so hard for them to take care of the children. How about you argue that men stand up and help the women that they've impregnated care for the children? Now, that's not always the case, but I'm saying sometimes it's the man who doesn't want the abortion and the woman who does. The point is, this, this makes him look like an absolute pig to me. Yeah, um, that's definitely one of the, one of the major... Uh, things that come to the forefront when when men are out there arguing against us. Um, th th there's other reasons, but it, it's not a good it's not a good look to start with. Um, but I, I do see, for, by and large, to me, and maybe you've seen different, Josh, but um, it, it does seem that yeah. men are more. <laughs> they they generally they generally seem to be the ones arguing, saying, "Hey, no." Um, I'll care for this child. If, if anybody's going to stick up for the child, a lot of times when an abortion is being considered, a lot of times it is the father saying, no, like, let, let me, let me help out. That that's happened. I've, I've, there's story after story after story. Um, but when there's also, he's on the other so, side, yeah, I, I, there's a as, lack of masculinity there. And yeah, it's just, it's I'll say mess. as a pastor, I have, <clears throat> and these are just anecdotes. So I don't know what the percentage is, but I have counseled with women who, um, who, who are pregnant and want to keep their child, reach out to the father who's no longer, who, who doesn't want to have anything to do with it and tells, tells the woman to have an abortion. Um, I have counseled with women like that. Um, sadly, it is more common than, than maybe we, we'd like to think.
Um, but that doesn't mean that it's also, you know, the shoes on both sides of the foot. So I don't even know if that's the right, you know, phrase, but you know what I'm saying? You, that, that there's, that there's two, that these things happen in different ways in different scenarios. Um, yeah. So, but certainly a man who's, who's arguing and, and just on, you know, on his, uh, it's a big issue to him to make sure that women can, can murder their children. That makes me think, why do you, why do you want men and women to, to not, to not have to take responsibility for the lives they create? And, and that's what it is. There's, there's no question. Like, look guys, we, we've gone over this a bazillion times. If you're looking at it um, spiritually, you're looking at it from, from, from the Bible, for, which is, which is true. Not, not just in a spiritual, like it's not real sense, right? I'm talking about, you know, from, from the Bible that gives us truth. Jesus and John the Baptist are, are living human beings with value in the womb. Jeremiah is talked about in the womb when um, he was a living human being with value. David is talked about in the womb with a, as a living human being with value. Even in the Old Testament law, if, if a woman was assaulted and in the assault, she lost a, a, a child that was in her womb, the, the assaulter would be charged with murder and we put, put, would be put to death because he murdered a child. That's, that is how, that is how God treats, um, uh, things in the womb. Not only that, but, but biology, um, backs that up, right? The fetus is a state is one stage of development of the human, of the human child, right? It's like saying a teenager or a toddler or a fetus. It's a human, it's alive. It has value. You can't say it's not valuable. It'd be like saying, oh, a toddler is not valuable like a teenager is. What are you talking about? This doesn't mean you can yeah. kill them. It's right? just because they can't go out there and, and what, make money? I mean, come on. So so it's just nonsense. There, there's no way that you look at this from the Bible, from, from, uh, from biology. It doesn't really matter how you look at this. Every way you look at it, you come to the conclusion that is a human life with value and taking that life is murder. Every abortion, successful abortion, involves taking the life of a human child, even if it's in the fetus stage. And therefore, you're going to have to come up with more than, oh, I really care about women and oh, they're in a, they're in a tough spot to, to provide argument for the right to murder a human child. So this is this still falls incredibly flat, and with it, with with the truth in mind that this is most obviously murder. I mean, murdering a a innocent human life. Let's watch the video again and and pause it this time. I am a pro-choice man, and there's a strange moment in nearly all of my interactions with professed pro-life women, one that never fails to disorient and grieve me, whether on social media or in. person disorient the <laughs> what he's disoriented and grieved what kind, uh, of, what kind of drugs are you taking when you're talking with <laughs> with with pro-life women you're disoriented what? <laughs> what? that's like when you're playing call of duty and like one of those flashbangs go off and you're just like like disoriented that's disor that's what i think of when i think i'm disoriented if i mean if he's talking to pro-life women, they are just saying, I don't think it's okay to kill a baby. How is that disorienting? How is that difficult to understand? It's a very basic principle. <laughs> the pro-life <laughs> argument is very simple and it has yet to be refuted sufficiently. How is this? This is not something that's like, oh, they took me down all these rabbit trails. No, 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 no. That would be your job. This is an easy one. <laughs> you should not be getting disoriented. Grieved, maybe. But not but, disoriented. But I think I think that this actually goes to the point I was making earlier. I think what he's saying is I'm disoriented because I don't know what to do. I'm a man who shouldn't have to tell a woman anything. You know, I I don't want to mansplain to her, but at the same time, I I love her too much to let her not murder her children. What? This, this can happen. This can happen when you are beaten in conversation. That's yeah. that's, that's probably what he's feeling. So person, I eventually have a realization. Only one of us believes that she should have full autonomy over her own body, and it isn't her. 
whether our exchanges in that moment. Uh, let's, let's just, we got to pause yeah. there. Yeah. Right. Wow. We, we got to park there for a second. Full um, autonomy <laughs> over your own body. If full autonomy over your own body means murdering other people with your body. No, you don't have full autonomy over your own body. No, nobody in the world should ever have full autonomy <laughs> over their own body. Like, no, no. Yeah. My children don't have full <laughs> autonomies over their own bodies. I don't have full autonomy over my own body. My wife doesn't have full autonomy over her own body. No, all God's children don't have full autonomy over their own body. <laughs> nobody should have a full autonomy, full autonomy, where they could do whatever they want, whenever they want it, however they want it. Right? You and can if just... that's how he means it, if that's how he means it, then he does not believe that in any way, shape, or form. No, you do not. Yeah. As, 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 as a practicing liberal, John Pavlovitz, you do not believe that she has autonomy over her own body to choose or not to choose which vaccine she puts in her body. You don't believe that she has the right to pick up a gun and defend herself. Um, you don't believe that she should be able to express her views on social media. Uh, you don't even believe that she should use her bodily autonomy to cook with a gas stove. So don't start talking to me about <laughs> bodily autonomy. You don't believe it. You're full of nonsense and you're talking about somebody else's body. This is ridiculous. Do not go down this road because that's a bunch of nonsense. It just yeah. is. I mean, come on. She doesn't have bodily autonomy. <laughs> to um to say that um that um she, she doesn't have bodily autonomy to say that that um that the that abortion is wrong she doesn't have bodily autonomy to, to say that that transgenderism is wrong that's homophobic you know see that yeah, that, that that's that hate be speech shut down and silenced yeah right so yeah, exactly. what do you mean you want her to have full autonomy you want her to submit to your perverted weird murderous viewpoint on a on an issue that is just cut and dry you want her to submit to you this is why i say he's a pig he, he comes across as an absolute creep and i don't know if it's i think it might be woke preacher clips that that produced this with black and white but it's perfect because it shows him for the creep like he definitely looks like very creepy <laughs> and so, as he should because of the point toxic made. toxic patriarchy right there for sure <laughs> trying to put the woman under his thumb for sure. And by the way, women, we're defending you here. You know, we're the men coming along and attacking the man who's coming along to pretend like he's attacking us and really is attacking you. I don't even know where I'm going with this sentence anymore. Are chilly or combustible. And regardless of how incendiary their words toward me might be, it never fails to fill me with a sadness. They are fighting with me and I am fighting for them. That never feels right. But so that sounds a lot like you're not wanting them to have autonomy. That, that's what it sounds right. like. Right. Yeah. Whatever happened to men not having a say on abortion? You know, he's fighting against them. You're not a woman. And, you don't get I'm, to say. I'm going, you don't, you don't have that say, right? Are we going back to the whole transgender thing where because now, according to the, the trans community, men can get pregnant? Men can now have a, a say on abortion? Is that where we're going now? Have we, have we changed that, Josh? I'm not sure. Yeah, and, and for him, <laughs> where to, are we with that? For him, a, a man <laughs> to tell women what they can and can't believe about the issue. No, no, no. See, what this is betraying is the obvious, the obvious fact that everyone and their mother knew from the beginning. And if you were fooled by this, come on, come on, you, you can't tell me you were fooled by this. This was the, the statement. Oh, you're a man. You don't have. You don't get, have the right to say anything was never, ever, ever about the fact that you're a man and don't have the right to talk about abortion because it only concerns women, because that's clearly false. Abortion kills the ch child of a man and a woman, not just the, the child of a woman, right? I mean, <laughs> both have to be involved. So that's obviously false. It was just a play, just like the word transphobe, a homophobe. It's just a play to try to get opponents to shut up. Yeah. That's, silence that's half all it of the, is. Silence half the detractors. And I think you're right Like with, with the whole piggish mentality. You notice how he said the incendiary words, the incendiary words towards me, they, they filled me with sadness. Like he's already making this all about himself and how he feels. Uh, you're supposed to, you, you are saying that you're defending women, but it's all about me. I'm grieved. I'm disoriented. I, I, I've taken these incendiary words. I'm so sad. <laughs> you're sad, but. <laughs> incendiary, that's another word I've, just, I learned on Call of Duty as well. 
I mean, he's, he's making it like it's a warfare here, you know, that right. having to talk to a woman who's pro-life. <sighs> yeah. God bless you, whoever the pro-life woman was who talked to him and made him want to make this video. God bless you, uh, yes. whoever you are. You're, the you're irony of my this. interactions with women who advocate for the removal or limiting of the rights of women is that I am trying to advocate for their inherent self-worth while they seem less. What about the self-worth of the child who 50% yes. of them are women? You're, you're arguing yep. not for the self-worth of women. You're arguing for the, for, the, for the lack of worth of their children. That is the opposite of nature. Nature tells a woman to value her children and you're telling her re remove any valuation you have for your child because I because I value you. That's the opposite. Yeah. Women and, and men are designed, parents are designed by God to instinctively devalue themselves in order to care for their children. They throw themselves in front of bullets and buses and whatever it is in order to care for their children. And you ask any parent worth anything um, and you say, if, if your child was on, was, you know, um, on, was going to die and the only way to save them was to give your life, would you do it? Every one of them. And it wouldn't even be a question. It'd be absolutely I would. Why, what are you talking about? Why would you even ask me this question? How much would I have to hate my child to not sacrifice my own life for them? And John Pavlovitz here is, oh, but I just value you so much that I think you should murder your children. Yeah. Um, self-worth. Okay. So following this logic, so a woman's self-worth. So, so, so the point here is, is being made that the self-worth of a woman is wrapped up in how much, um, consequence free sex they can have. Right. So, so, so let's, let's follow that logic. So, so that's gotta be, um, a woman has more self-worth if, if they're the accidental product of a billion of billions of years of evolution. Right. Um, and they're, they're just on this earth to live for whatever pleasure they want, no consequences, you know, for them or for anyone who would want to take advantage of them. Um, we can refute that pretty easily with the mental health crisis amongst, you know, sex workers. There's articles, I Googled it, you can look it up. There, there's articles all over the internet that have, you know, the, the mental health issues amongst those who work in the, in the sex industry, astronomical astronomical people these these women are just you know, they want attention they want um they want these accolades they want them fit fast quick and it, and it messes with their heads that is the self-worth you're trying to give them as contrasted with the self-worth of you know being created in the image of an infinitely loving and caring god who has a plan for you who wants you to be part of a family and to raise children that you know that that grow up to honor and respect each other and and you and and human life um especially the innocent and vulnerable human life that we have among us that those two contrasts show that you don't give a crap about self-worth you want to drive these people down. We're trying to lift them up into into morality and goodness and you know and 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 rightness. And you're trying to shove them down. This is this is a completely contradict contradictory um, message that he's putting out there. When you follow it to fruition, um, it, it's insanity. There's yeah. there's no there's no reality behind it. Yeah, spot on. Um, passionate about it. I believe in education and in birth control and in doing everything possible not to create an unwanted pregnancy. This is just, this is just so, I believe in preg, in, in, in birth control and what was the other things he said? Um, uh, let me, let me back it up here inherent self-worth while they seem less passionate about it. I believe in education and in birth control and in doing everything possible not to create an unwanted pregnancy. Oh, I believe in education and birth control and everything possible. How about not having sexual relationships with someone that you can't raise a child with? How about that, right? Oh, as a pastor, maybe we should go even a little further. Maybe you not have a sexual relationship with someone you're not committed to in a marriage commitment.
right? I'm sorry, you're a you're supposedly a preacher, so you're supposedly care about what the Bible says about this. There's a reason, by the way, that that, that fornication is called a sin in the Bible. Why? Because it creates children without committed parents to raise the children. How about instead of all of this other excuses to continue to have sex outside of marriage, we just say the best way to prevent quote unquote unwanted pregnancies is to have sex within a committed marriage relationship. I mean, right? <laughs> is that is that is that just wrong for a pastor to say these days? Am I, am I going to be canceled now? Yeah, it really makes you wonder what he actually does believe from the Bible as a pastor. Um, he, he says, you know, I believe in all this stuff to, to not create unwanted pregnancy. But at the end of the day, I defer to the woman because what happens in the confines of her own body is not my business. Well, guess what? It is the business of a nation um, if, if somebody wants to kill an innocent person and we're just going to do nothing about it because that that basic tenet of morality cannot be violated or nobody's safe this nation is gone mm. um so it just, absolutely this. is our if, our um, business if a human being murdered john pavlovitz i would advocate for that human being's arrest detention and and execution why because they do not have the authority over their own body to take an innocent life. I don't, I don't care what their reasoning is, unless John Pavlovitz is not innocent, is attempting to harm them in some way, it doesn't matter. If, if, if John is innocent and murdered, his murderer should face penalties. Why? Because it is our business to tell people that there are limits to their bodily autonomy. So I don't yeah, know how much more we'll play, but let me, just one of them. I mean, we're almost out of time. Let me let me just put a, a few seconds more in here. See, but at the end of all of that, I defer to the woman because I simply don't believe that what happens within the confines of her body is any of my business. Yeah, we just yeah okay. Well, that was a waste of time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, watching him kind of was, but you know, getting those ideas. I mean, it, that really is ultimately the crux of the argument in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, what happens in the confines of your own body? Yeah, whatever happens in the confines of your own home, everybody's talking about privacy. You can't kill people. The whole point is you can't kill people. You can do whatever you want to your own body, whatever, but you don't yeah. kill other people. And we can prove that that is another person. It's a different DNA structure. It's a different person, different human scientifically, morally, religiously, theologically, all of those things. It, mm -hmm. It's It's... It's a basic, it's a cut and dry argument. This is what happens when we, women, when we teach people over and over and over again, hey, you know, just go ahead and have sex without consequences. Just go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And then things happen because that's what sex does. And then we say, okay, well, here's the solution. Just murder it. No, that's not a solution. Start following the Bible. That's the solution. That's all the time we have for today. We'll see you next time on Point of View.